last uh, couple of classes we extensively discussed about the analysis of proton spectra and the analysis of the spectra of several heteronuclei. Heteronuclei what I mean is anything apart from proton like carbon, nit fluorine, phosphorus, nitrogen 15, boron, selenium, silicon, platinum varieties of nuclei we covered and we especially we took deeper into carbon 13 NMR where I showed it is a common nuclei apart from after phosphorus that is most extensively studied nuclei lot of examples we did and I showed you how we can even get the chemical shifts we can calculate the chemical shift on phenyl rings carbons chemical shift of the carbons especially the phenyl groups are there based on the substituents and depending upon which carbon you are looking at it whether it is ortho to the substituent para or meta and which is the substituent whether it is mono or di like that asymmetric or asymmetric so many examples we took and also we analyze carbon 13 and we showed carbon 13 can be utilized to get the structure of the molecules and I also said something about depth distortionless enhancement polarization transfer using that we can edit the carbon spectra in the sense identify the carbons where it is attached to different types of protons we can identify CH3 carbon CH2 carbon CH carbon quaternary carbons and in the phosphorus fluorine NMR many examples we took where we could analyze very easily and uh, these are all friendly nuclei spin off nuclei we can we could get the coupling between themselves homonuclear coupling of fluorine or homonuclear coupling of phosphorus or heteronuclear coupling between phosphorus fluorine abundant spins and dilute spins and many examples of spin half nuclei spin one uh, more than spin half like and how they are coupled with to spin one what is the type of pattern we get and, and when you are looking at spin quadrupolar sp uh, nuclei coupled to spin half or how this pattern you are going to get like N14 of uh, nitrogen 15 or boron spectrum of BH4 plus minus NH4 at ion many examples we took and we got fairly confidence about the analysis of the spectra of different nuclei you have got it ok. With this we will switch over to a different topic because so far I gave some concepts and analysis now I will give you one more one or two more concepts which is very important so that we can afterwards we can jump into 2D NMR for understanding 2D NMR especially this you need to understand what is called a J modulation spin echoes and also little bit about polarization transfer. So, in the next one or two classes we will cover this thing and then subsequently we will switch over to two dimensional NMR where we can give some concepts and then analysis of the two dimensional NMR spectra. Okay, today I will start with spin echoes. Spin echo you please remember it is a basic pulse sequence fundamental pulse sequence in NMR very first immediately after the discovery of NMR, NMR in 1945 within 5 years uh, Erwin had introduced spin echo fantastic idea this is one of the basic sequence and it transformed NMR understanding a lot. So, spin echo sequence is very important it is used in many NMR techniques we will come to that later how we do. What is the meaning of a spin echo? If I have a single RF pulse that is what you have been doing apply RF pulse tilt the magnetization thermal magnetization to XY plane and start collecting the signal. In the XY plane the spin vector start defacing and then when it defaces there is a decay of the signal in the XY plane while growing simultaneously along the axis that is what I said in the introduction class. While decaying the signal in the time domain you collect the signal do the Fourier transformation you get the spectrum the decay in the time domain we call it as FID which exponentially decays that is all we discussed this is when you apply a single pulse. What happens if you apply two successive RF pulses with some time delay between them not success you know immediately successively with a time delay what will happen then we get what is called spin echoes. What are the spin echoes we will try to understand now usually a standard spin echo has a two pulse sequence 90 tau 180 tau this is the sequence 90 degree pulse a delay apply 180 pulse a delay and then start collecting the signal this is a standard spin echo sequence how it works we will, we will understand the concept later but here immediately after the 180 pulse what happens is after 90 pulses the signal start defacing when it comes to magnetization comes to xy plane here they start defacing. After some time 
you apply a 180 pulse and give some delay equal delay this and this should be equal and start collecting the signal then what is going to happen is the one eight after one eight pulse and after certain delay the what it was the spin vectors which underwent defacing in the first period will start refacing after this delay something it is like a time reversal you are reversing the what is happening the phenomena what happens here the spins which defaced now we reface it after applying a one eight pulse and gives exactly equal amount of time this is called echo time from this to this is called echo time refreshing time okay and echo amplitude decays with a further with that with some time of course i will see that later the, how it works is like this first 90 degree pulse tips the nuclear spin into transverse plane that's what we have been doing that is the basic thing of nmr first pulse always brings the magnetization to the xy plane transverse plane and spin isochrome mode start moving faster and slower because they are defacing let us say from the x axis this is a let us say my on resonance and some will go or those which are on resonance will not nothing will happen those who are uh, here and here with a different offsets chemical sheet offsets these things will start processing some will go like this some will go like this this is called fast moving and slow moving components some of the spin isochromates move faster and some moves slower most those who moves faster gain gain phase faster those who move slower will lose phase fast slower okay essentially the spin isochromates start defacing with time with time entirely all the spin isochromates in the xy plane start completely defacing that is important thing apply an entry pulse wait for some time the spin start defacing that's what we know now you apply a 180 pulse what does 180 pulse does it turns the entire spin system and reverses the phases of the isochromates very interesting what is happening is the faster ones start moving slowly and the slower ones start moving faster initially when we have uh, isochromates here some are moving faster some are moving slow after 180 pulse they all get interchanged here and they start moving in the you know one which was here start moving slowly one which is faster start moving slowly so faster will start moving slowly and the slow one start moving faster at the exactly identical delay that's what i said first time the first uh, spin delay t and the second delay t when it becomes equal all the spin isochromates regain the phase coherence and we get afid which we you know this is what is called echo it is like telling there are several like spin vectors here think of a situation what will happen think of a running race let us different people are sitting standing here what will happen you ask all of them to start moving everybody start running different people will done at different speeds that's fine after some time what happens stop allow them to stop wherever they are some see what would have happened one fast runner would have moved faster another run would have moved here some would have moved slow some would not have moved, some would have moved very little like that depending upon their speed they are all at different places ask them to stop immediately we shall and ask them to turn back reverse exactly like applying a 180 pulse ask them to turn back ask them to continue running back with the same speed they have because their speed will be identical and this fellow move move this much with for time t and after time t when he is asked to come back same time t he will come back here he will also come back here he will come back here he will come back here all the spin vectors we started from a particular place will come back to the same place this is what is called an echo what happens x it is like applying a 180 pulse it is like different people who are running uh, going and going to a running race have a different speeds after a time t ask them to stop take a reverse turn and come back to the same place move with the same speed 
then everybody will come back to the same place. This is all called an echo, identical echo. So this is called spin echo. The coherence isochromates will gain coherence again, and this is what is called a term called echo. Echo means you will deface for some time. After exactly particular time, t apply one eighty pulse, and exactly equal amount of time, the spin isochromates come back and reface. Deface for isochromates will reface it after the identical time with a 180 pulse in between. This is called an echo. Please understand this. This is the con pictorially we can see this. First apply a 180 pulse. FID start decaying like this. Apply 90, 180 pulse here. Then what is going to happen? They, then they will like as the runners have reversed their faces, reverse the direction. They will again start going back like here. Whatever they take it. Will they start going at the top of this? It is a echo. But in between this intensity and this intensity, slightly there is less because between this time there is what is called a relaxation. If, if there is no, if because of the relaxation, intensity of the echo has come down, but it forms an echo. It gets refaced, and this, of course, one of the T two experiment and we do this. Thing. We measure this decay and measure the defacing time that is T2 relaxation in the transverse plane relaxation time ok this is how spin echo works this is a pictorial representation of a spin echo apply 90 pulse wait for time time spin start defacing apply 180 pulse wait for the equal amount of time the spin starts gaining phase and forms an echo here that is important. So, this is what is happening what is happening after the if to be precise after the 90 pulse the spin start losing phase coherence. Coherence means signal magnetization in the x y plane, ok. And then FID is not last after some time things would have defaced, and it is a you know common assumption we have lost the FID. No, FID is not last, but the only phase coherence is last, there is a decoherence, phase is last, but FID is not last, and the system will have some sort of a memory, it is a hidden memory is there, it is called atomic memory it is there spins will have some atomic memory and the second pulse reface the deface spin isochromates this is what happens. So, defacing means not that effort is the completely last it is system will somehow retain its memory and that is regained by applying as a another pulse and then waiting for a time p we are going time t we are going to get the refacing. What should be the flip angle for the second pulse? Of course, I said in the first example 90 t 180 t that is a common spin echo sequence that is what I showed common spin echo sequence is first 90 t delay 180 t delay and collect, collect the signal after echo. But should it be always 180? Need not be it can be any angle. In fact, when Han Erwin Han 1950 he did the first spin echo experiment it was 90 t 90 experiment it is also possible any two pulses I said with a delay I did not say N i t in the beginning I showed it a commonly employed x pulse sequences for spin echo is 90 t 180 and when the spin angles other than 90 and 180 are used we call this as Han echo commonly spin echo sequence uses 90 t 180 t if other than the any of these angles is used still you can get an echo but it is called Han echo because we are honoring the scientist who gave this idea that is called Han echo. Now, we will understand what happens to chemical shifts, what happens to coupling both in homonuclear case and heteronuclear case during spin echo sequence and we will take the example of first two spins with different chemical shifts. I am not talking about the coupling at the moment. We will come to the coupling evolution later. Right now, I am assuming only two spins, independent spins, different chemical shifts, and I am not worried about coupling, there is no coupling. Okay. I will take this example. Let us see for these two spins with the different chemical shifts what happens in the spin echo sequence. We have two spin isochromates, one A, other is X. I told you spin they have different chemical shifts apply a 90 degree pulse bring both the spins to 
x axis or y axis in the x y plane. I will always consider the A spin on resonance. On resonance means it is when it is brought to x axis it is, it is not moving it is stuck there ok it is not moving there is no offset it is on resonance. A spin will be at x, always on x axis. I brought to x axis, it will be on x axis. X axis. If you bring it to y axis, on resonance, it will be always on y axis. So, because it is on resonance, A is not moving. What about x? x is not on resonance. So, what happens with the time delay delta? x starts moving. A is, look, A is on resonance, not moving. x is moving. Whether faster or slower, I do not care because some chemical shift difference is there, it is moving. Okay. It is a fast moving component we have taken. If it was this side, it was a slow moving, fine. At this stage, what I will do is I am going to apply a 180 pulse. What does 180 pulse does? It reverses, okay. it completely you know, turns the table like this. So, what will happen? the vector which was here I am applying 180 on the x axis it rotates along this x axis rotate the rotation axis x along this axis it completely rotates by 180 degree then what is going to happen when it rotates by 180 degree the vector which was here move to this side because I have rotated. Now what will happen it starts moving faster became slow now because it is on other side it start moving slow it became a slow moving vector and it start moving like that wait for some time a same delta time then what happened after exactly equal amount of time it will come to the same x axis Rem understand the point x is not on resonance with the time delay x has moved from home. Now, you reverse it by applying a 180 pulse they continue to move in the same direction now and then after certain delay it will again come back to the same x axis I like I gave the example of spin echo where the runners go and come back at the same time after a particular period exactly like that there is an echo they will come back spin vector comes back and it comes here. What happened over the time now? A has not moved because on resonance forget it, but there was a chemical shift difference between A and X as a consequence A was moving there was offset chemical shift offset was there that is why A was moving faster slow does not matter, but this 180 pulse after delay what we did is that after 2 delay the phase difference between A and X is reduced is 0. They have 2 different chemical shifts in spite of it they come out of the same place. Now, it appears as if there is no phase difference at all that means there is no chemical shift difference between A and X. You can imagine a situation now there were 2 chemical shifts between A and X after spin echo it appears as if they have the same chemical shift there is no chemical shift difference and this means I would say spin echo has refocused the chemical shifts it is called chemical shift refocusing. I took the example of 2 homonuclear spins A and X when you take a homonuclear spins A and X I showed but there are when the 2 spins are there with spin echo there is a chemical shift refocusing there is difference in the chemical shift between them is removed when the difference in the chemical shifts are removed we call it as chemical shift refocusing all right we will go I took the simple example of 2 protons ok. You may ask me a question in a given uh, sample it need not be always 2 protons there could be many spins many protons with different chemical shifts then what will happen of course true there is no difference at all as soon as you bring all and all the spin systems into x axis there is coherence here. Mag magnetiz this along this axis is called magnetization apply 90 pulse bring it to x axis instantaneously there is a phase coherence at a given instant of time as soon as you bring it to x axis there is a phase coherence. Now with time there is a decoherence 
some are fast moving vector some are slow moving vector they start moving some move this side some move this side with respect to this one x axis continue for a longer time they keep on defacing like this after some time for after certain delay whatever the time you give the delay you apply a pi pulse after certain delay delta what does pi pulse do i am applying pi pulse on the x axis you rotate along x axis like this then the red spin vectors move here and blue vectors move here the red which is moving in this direction continue to move in this direction the blue which is moving in this direction that continue to move in this direction what is happening they start moving in the opposite directions which was going like this now it will come back one which was going like this is now starting like going like this all the vectors give identical delay after some time what happens they all come back they were moving were moving like this they will again come back to x axis you understood all the my spin vectors are brought to x axis by a 90 pulse instantaneously there is a phase coherence and all over some time there is a defacing all of them have different chemical shifts offset as a consequence some are moving like this some are moving like this they are called fast moving and slow moving components they keep on spanning out like this fanning out like this after a start delay delta apply a pi pulse along x axis rotate along x axis then you can see fast moving slow moving components interchanged they continue to move in the same direction now what will happen exactly after a same moment of delay they all overlap come back to the same x axis what happened we created an echo during this echo what happened now there was lots of phase differences chemical shifts were there many protons many spins have different chemical shifts but echo finally refocused everything back to the same axis that means chemical shifts are completely refocused spin echoes homonuclear case will reface will refocus chemical shifts remember that this is what is happening and every spin vector starting on x axis will come back to the same x axis that's what the echo that's what i told you start the runners started from the same place moved at different places different times and afterwards when they were asked to come back with the same speed they come back to the same place they reach the same or origin similarly started with the x axis they started fanning out again came back to the same x axis and this is spin echo you understood the concept of spin echo spin echo in the homonuclear case are refocusing the chemical shifts this is the car logic you should remember homonuclear spin echo refocuses chemical shifts what happens if the magnetic field is not homogeneous all this were under the assumption magnetic field is perfectly homogeneous but inherently there are inhomogeneities in the magnetic field it need not be homogeneous there will be gradients of the field spins experience different fields interestingly they also get refocused field inhomogeneity is also refocused that is the important point not only chemical shifts field inhomogeneity if it is there they are also get refocused why because their resonating frequencies are different with a different field again chemical shifts will be different since the chemical shifts are refocused means in homogeneities are also refocused that's the logic so in homogeneity is also refocused along with the chemical shifts you can ask me a question are we did something in an experiment where we applied the pulse along x axis and rotated the spin vectors in the along the x axis like this so the we interchange the vector directions movement directions what happens in the x axis if i apply a pulse on y axis as of course i did not discuss all those things in one of the previous courses i have discussed about the pulse phase receiver phase everything we can apply pulse along x axis y axis plus x minus x plus y minus y everything at different axis we can do and not only 90 pulse for 80 pulse and we can make ensure 
this uh, depending upon the day and axis in which you apply a pole we can make the vectors rotate along the xy plane or in the yz plane or xz plane either clockwise or anti clockwise all these things are possible you can play with spin dynamics so now if i apply a 180 pulse instead of 180 x pulse in the spin noco sequence what will happen let us see consider a situation like this I have brought all the spin vectors to x axis. Wait for some time, the fins start defacing. Wait for some uh, some more time, more spins are de defacing, they are fanning out. At this stage, I apply a 180 pulse. Instead of rotating along this axis, now I am applying along y axis here. So, I am rotating along y axis here, not along this axis. Then what will happen? here when i was rotating these vectors were here these vectors were here but when i am rotating along this axis this will come here this will come here now remember the direction of uh, axis on which i am rotating here i am rotating on the y axis so it is like turning a this thing table like, like a pancake turning I like reversing of the pancake this is what happens now wait for some time delta or identical time all the spin vectors again come back what happened here same you have still refocused the chemical shifts in the previous example all the spin vectors were refocused along the plus x axis but now it is refocused along minus x axis that is all the difference the refocusing still occurs even whether you apply a pulse along plus x axis whether x axis or y axis there is chemical shift refocusing in one example when you applied along plus x axis 180 pulse there was a refocusing along plus x axis if you apply 180 pulse along y axis there was a refocusing along minus x axis that is all there is no difference except the refocusing axis is different but chemical shifts are always refocused. So, please remember whether you apply 180 pulse along x axis or 180 pulse along y axis there is a chemical shift refocusing in the homonuclear case. Okay, this is a simple uh, video which shows you how spin echo occurs. Look at it, it starts with here. You apply 180 pulse, come here, apply 90 pulse, bring all the spins here, they start fanning out, apply 180 pulse, it is like turning the pancake. They are rotated like this and then go there again fanning out and this is where we get echo. Carefully observe this. What is happening? Yeah. This 180 pulse, what it does, you see, observe. It if I bring the vectors here start panning out and 180 pulse rotates this like this and again they start moving in the opposite direction please see the direction of rotation the one which was rotating like this now they continue to rotate in the same direction and then refocus this is the video of a spin echo now i also has told you if there is a magnetic field in homogeneities they get refocused. I will ask you a question what happens if there are fluctuating magnetic fields fluctuating not magnetic fluctuating local fields of course that is also magnetic field the fluctuating local fields this is not because of this innumerate the main magnetic field within the molecule for it could be diffusion there could be different molecular motions that can vary with time ok different a part of the molecule if a different molecules are there if they take a mixture their molecular weight could be different they may have diffuse at different rates then fluctuating field local fields will be different if the molecules are undergoing diffusion or any other type of motion then what will happen will there be a refocusing is the next question they precise at different frequencies before and after 180 pulse because they are not same because they have precision frequency continuously keep changing because of diffusion or molecular motion. So, as a consequence they precise at different frequencies before the 180 and after the 1 pulse there is no question of refocusing the decay is irreversible. In other case it is a reversible decay that was reverse decay was there 180 pulse brought it back that was an echo, but here this is not a reversible decay the inhomogeneity the fluctuating field because of diffusion perfusion or molecular motions is irreversible. So, they are not 
refocused and because of that you will lose the energy lose the signal ok signal will be lost intensity of the signal will be lost. So, this is the idea where you use to get the diffusion coefficients later I will tell you that later when we come to that, but please remember now what is happening is when there are field inhomogeneities there is a refocusing field local fluctuating field because of molecular diffusion perfusion or different types of motion the different precision frequencies will be there before and after 180 pulse as a consequence the decay is irreversible there is no way you can refocus it and this is what it is. So, this is what I just wanted to now we can take the example of what happens if there is a homonuclear J coupling between the two spins. This needs bit more uh, discussion since the time is getting up I am uh, getting over already. What I am going to do is I will stop here we will take the example of what happens to the spin echo when there is J coupling. Remember so far I said there is no J coupling I took only chemical shifts of A and X first A was on resonance X was moving then I showed both will refocus after 180 pulse whether you apply on x axis or y axis no problem when you number of spins different chemical shifts that is different offsets they all will be finding out different frequencies after 180 pulse again they will refocus I showed that chemical shifts are refocused ok. So, and then I said this can be in case if there is inhomogeneity that also gets refocused if there is a uh, local field because of uh, diffusion perfusion molecular motions then it is a irreversible decay that cannot be refocused. So, I said homonuclear spins spin echo will refocus only chemical shifts whatever it appears as if although there are different offset different chemical shift offsets when you apply this spin echo it appears as if there is no difference in the chemical shift among the spins this is what is called chemical shift refocusing which homonuclear spin echo does. But the question is the spins are not just a chemical shift alone they could be coupled I took a hypothetical example there is no coupling what happens there is a coupling will it refocus we do not know I will explain that to you in the next class right now I just wanted to tell you how spin echo works spin echo is just simple 90 tau 180 tau sequence it could be 90 tau it could be any angle if there is any other angle it is called an echo first discovery of spin echo was 90 tau 90, 90 tau 90 tau sequence both the delays were equal and when it is hacked this is called time reversal the defaced spins will get refaced after exactly same amount of time I gave an example of runners different runners will be running at different speeds instantaneously ask them to stop apply 180 pulse means reverse 180 pulse is reversing immediately ask them to turn back then ask them to run now with the same amount of time they all come back to the same place this has been echo I gave you this example. So, the spin echo refocus this thing chemical shifts offsets we will stop here we will take the example of what happens with the J coupling for homonuclear heteronuclear case everything in the next class thank you very much.